This video is sponsored by Squarespace. So I have been using the Google Pixel 7 for a month now. I took a little bit of time to bring this review because when it comes to Pixel phones, there's always a lot of bugs to deal with in the first month or so, and a lot of things still need a polishing. So after receiving a couple of updates, I am absolutely loving my Pixel 7. Just like last year's Pixel 6, I think Google has once again struck the right balance between awesome experience and good value this year as well. I still think Google could have done more, possibly, and totally kill the semi-flagship lineup from OnePlus, Vivo, and even Samsung's lower flagship models like the S22. But still, given everything that this phone offers, I think the Pixel 7 could well be the phone of the year. If you look at the specs of the Pixel 7 versus the Pixel 6 side by side, Google has not made any drastic changes. You still get a very similar design, similar display, same camera hardware, and the same Google experience we know and love. But I still think Google has done a decent job to make the Pixel 7 a proper, like proper phone for someone who wants to upgrade from a mid-range device. Trust me, you are going to love it if you're currently using a mid-range phone. And the first thing that you will really fall in love with, just like me, is undoubtedly the cameras. If you look at other similarly priced phones like the OnePlus 10T or the Asus Zenfone 9, their cameras are not very consistent in different situations. But with the Pixel 7, you're going to get the best photography experience with incredibly natural color science in most of the images. It uh, delivers an excellent dynamic range and the white balance is consistently on point as well. Before the Pixel 7, I was using the iPhone 14 Pro Max as my daily driver, which you might know has one of the best cameras in the world right now. But it also costs you a fortune. However, for almost half the price, you are going to get as good, if not better, results from the Pixel 7 versus the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Just look at these portrait shots. They are simply amazing. I think with every iteration of Pixel phones, we are seeing improvements in terms of software optimization, and I feel like other smartphone brands are just not doing enough. Having said that, I still think that Google needs to up its game when it comes to selfies since it's not as good as what the primary camera manages. The same goes with the ultra wide angle shots as well. I uh, found the field of view to be a little narrow compared to iPhones and Samsung. Plus, the sensor size is pretty small on this ultra wide angle camera compared to the main lens, so it does struggle at times while also taking a tad more processing time, especially during low light conditions. Yes, Google's computational algorithm is great, but if they used better, bigger sensors for the ultra wide angle camera, I am 100% sure the quality will get even better. I also think Pixel 7's videos are alright given the price tag as I found them to have good colors with nice stability. Even so, it's nowhere near what Apple offers, so if you're someone who likes filming Instagram reels of your pet or if you are an aspiring content creator, iPhone still offers better videography in almost all lighting conditions. But if you are a casual user like me, the ones from the Pixel 7 are decent as well. The only thing I don't like about it is the low light ultra wide shots. It's just terrible. The new cinematic mode could also use some work given how the portrait shots were that we saw earlier. When the subject is still, it can capture decent cinematic shots, but once there is any sort of movement, it loses focus. Maybe this could improve with updates. Let's hope. Now, just like the cameras, Google also has not made any drastic changes in terms of design on the Pixel 7 either. But I guess I am completely fine with it. They have upgraded the robustness by offering Gorilla Glass Victus on both the front and the back this time, whereas the camera module also gets a metallic build. And as expected, it is IP68 rated as well. So yeah, it is quite a well-built phone. Actually, I accidentally dropped it a few times from this height and it was able to survive it all without any damage, which is great. Now, about this new camera module, I have seen quite a few people dislike it. 
but I like it and I think it makes it unique and recognizable if someone is holding a Pixel phone. The thing I like most about this new camera module the most is that it does not wobble when putting the phone face down on a flat surface. But like with last year's Pixel 6, it accumulates a lot of dust so I had to clean it every now and then. Likewise, because of all the heavy materials like Gorilla Glass Victors, metal frames and a metallic camera module squeezed inside a relatively smaller body, the Pixel 7 is a bit dense and heavy, so it took some time for me to get used to its heft. But I still haven't gotten used to this uh, weird button placement. Here the power button is placed slightly higher than where my thumb rests, which means that I always keep hitting the volume up button instead. Maybe they could have placed the volume buttons on the left or gone with a different texture or tactile feedback here. Okay, this is something that you should eventually get used to, but the aspect where I genuinely think the Pixel 7 could have done better is in the display department. As you can see, its bezels are quite prominent, which makes it look a bit generic, like a mid-range phone. But more importantly, it only refreshes at 90Hz and because of this, I did not find the Pixel 7 to be as smooth as I had hoped. So yeah, Google should have given a 120Hz refresh rate here, just like the Pro model for that added fluidity. The overall quality of the display is good though, if not flagship level good. The peak brightness is now at 1400 nits, so it's plenty bright. HDR10 Plus works really well on all streaming platforms and the color accuracy is also appreciable. I am also enjoying typing on this thing, which is partly because of how good the haptic feedback is. The speaker quality is also okay-ish for the price. It's not very loud, but I like the overall soundstage. Clear vocals, decent treble, and slightly pronounced bass. So yeah, I am not complaining. The optical fingerprint sensor also has gotten a bit faster with the latest November update, but still it is nowhere near the competition, both in terms of speed and reliability. So I do hope Google will get a better fingerprint sensor supplier next year. Now getting to the performance, this is that one area where Google received a lot of bashing last year because of the mediocre gaming results and bad heat management. It did improve with a few updates eventually, but the performance was still nowhere near the competition. This year, we have the new second-gen Tensor chip co-developed with Samsung called Tensor G2. But its performance leave is not that significant. Sadly, the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 and even the last-gen A15 Bionic are still faster and will yield better performance, say, in 2-3 to three years' time. But for now, this Tensor chip is plenty powerful for everyday tasks. Even for gaming, I found the Pixel 7 does a better job than the Pixel 6. You can now play games at higher uh, graphic settings and achieve better sustained stability as well. Still, uh, Tensor has a long way to go to match the raw performance of Apple or Qualcomm chips. It's still just a second-gen product after all, so I do hope Google catches up soon. Maybe collaborating with TSMC instead of Samsung will do the trick because, you know, Samsung is not particularly doing that well in the silicon industry right now. And all the high-end chips from Apple and Qualcomm are now manufactured by TSMC. Anyway, what the Tensor G2 does better is with AI-related tasks. Many of the standout Google exclusive features like fixing blurry photos, extracting text and messages on the go, and removing the background noise while you're still on a call, all of these are only possible with the new and improved neural processing unit. Google also promises 3 years of OS and 5 years of security updates for the Pixel 7. Now, call me greedy, but I think they could have given 4 years of OS upgrades since Samsung's out there offering exactly that, even on some of its mid-range phones. Lastly, as for battery life, it's pretty average. But uh, this is me speaking who's used to the incredible battery endurance of the iPhone 40 Pro Max. On my typical usage with mobile data turned on all through the day, I've always had to charge the phone at around 8pm, whereas my iPhone 14 Pro Max would still have like 40% battery left. So coming from that, I can't say that I'm a big fan of Pixel 7's battery endurance. Google has also gone with a conservative approach to charging just like Apple and Samsung. 
The Pixel 7 only supports 20 watt power delivery charging, which rapidly charges the phone from 0 to 50% in 30 minutes and takes it up to 80% in one hour. After that, the charging is very slow to conserve the phone's battery health and it takes an additional 40 to 45 minutes to hit 100%. So despite some obvious downsides that I've discussed in this video, for me, the Pixel 7 is still an outstanding semi-flagship phone. And if you're someone who wants to upgrade from a mid-range device to the Pixel 7, it is going to be a great upgrade, trust me. Okay, one crucial thing that I forgot to mention is that if you're living in India, the Pixel 7 is slightly overpriced right now at 60,000 Indian rupees. During the first sale, I got around 5,000 rupees off using bank offers, although that offer is no longer available right now. But I'm pretty sure that there are going to be similar offers in the coming days, so watch out for that. Uh, and what you also need to watch out is Squarespace. If you're building a brand in 2022, a good website is an absolute must, and for that, look no further than Squarespace. It is an all-in-one, one-step solution to help you build your brand online. Its custom templates help you build a beautiful website that fits your business or blog. With Squarespace, you can even maximize your visibility even more with their wide range of SEO tools. And with their elaborate analytics, you can minimize areas of error and optimize your performance. So get started with building the best website today by heading to squarespace.com slash gadgetbyte.